In this video, I want to talk about bagging. So we're going to look at bagging as an ensemble machine learning algorithm. And then we're going to see how we can tweak certain hyperparameters. For example, the number of the decision trees and then the maximum samples in order to achieve better model performance. So bagging as an ensemble machine learning algorithm, what it does, it combines the predictions of multiple decision trees. And the way it works is that it draws multiple bootstrap samples from the training data and then it fits a decision tree on each of them. And then the predictions from the decision trees are then combined to provide an even more accurate prediction than that of a single decision tree. So ensembles are used to provide a better predictive model performance than the predictive performance of just a single model, all right? And the reason why we use ensembles as well is because we have a lower spread between these predictions and then we can have a more stable model that combines better between the bias and the variance, okay? So ensembles are used to achieve a better model performance over a predictive task, over a specific predictive task, then for example, just one model. And the way we do that is by, especially in the case of bagging, what we do here, we try to optimize for bias. So we're increasing the bias, but we at the same time reduce variance because in many problems, the problem of overfitting is the most sensitive one. So by reducing the variance, so by reducing that overfitting, you kind of achieve a better model performance even though you increase the bias and of course that means the model can generalize better but is less specific over specific noise in the data so this is the problem with machine learning you always have to optimize for bias and variance and ensemble models specifically bagging they optimize for bias against variance so this is the main thing that you need to understand about bagging is that you get a better generalization over the problem, over the, predict the predictive task against the actual variance making the model perform perfectly on that specific data set. Okay, so you generalize better over having uh, the problem of overfitting. Ideally, we would always prefer a model that has both a low bias and a low variance, but you can never achieve that perfect model. This is, this is the situation, this is the real world scenario. With that in mind, let's look at our example and let's see exactly how we can choose the best hyperparameters to solve a problem with a bagging ensemble algorithm. Let's go ahead and load the basics and now what we're going to do we're going to create our classification problem with make classification from scikit-learn and we're going to have a hundred thousand samples we're going to have 20 features out of which 15 will be informative five will be redundant and of course we're setting the random state so that you guys get the same data set and now if we look at the shape of our x for example we can see that we have 100 samples and 20 features it's very easy to create a bagging classifier with scikit-learn. All you have to do is use the bagging classifier class. And here we're going to use the, the classic, okay? So we're going to use the repeated stratified K fold for the cross validation. And then we're going to calculate the score with the cross validation score from model selection. Let's go ahead and import these. And now we're going to do the basic thing. So we're going to create our bagging classifier and then we're going to create our repeated stratified K fold. We're going to use five splits, two repeats, and of course we're going to set the random state to two, to zero. And then we're going to calculate the score by inputting the model, the data set, and of course then we're going to score it with accuracy and the cross validation will use the repeated stratified K fold. Now let's go ahead and run this. And what we're going to do, we're going to print the mean accuracy and then we're going to see also the standard deviation to see the actual spread between these predictions and then we're going to see also the runtime it's going to take i think around 20 seconds let's wait until it finishes 
right so it took 23 seconds and our mean accuracy is 94.7 which is a pretty good accuracy okay this doesn't really tell us much because we just ran it once and we ran it with the default uh, number of trees with the default number of samples so now what we're going to do we're going to try to tweak the number of decision trees first to see how the number of decision trees actually affect the model performance we're going to create a for loop which is a very uh, simple concept in which we're going to go through 10 25 50 100 200 400 and 800 decision trees and then we're, what we're going to do we're going, going to plot all of these results to see how the number of decision trees actually affects the model performance now we're going to create our bagging classifier and we're going to pass in the number of estimators to be one of the number from this list okay and then we're going to perform the same thing we're going to perform the cross validation using repeated stratify k fold but here i'm just going to use three splits because it takes a very long time and then we calculate the score with the cross val score method now when i run this it takes 43 minutes and 39 seconds it takes a very very long time even on my machine and i have an i9 macbook from 2019 and 43 minutes I, I don't think you have the time here to wait until it finishes so I'm not gonna run this now I'm just gonna put in the results that I got from when I first ran it so these are the actual results that we get for 10 trees for 25 trees and the same up until 800 trees okay so this is an array with the scores that we got for all of those runs so you see we have six results because what we did we ran it on three splits and two repeats if we run this just so that we assume that we actually ran the whole the whole thing up above but now i saved everything into a rest dictionary and if we look at the keys of course they are the actual number of estimators the number of decision trees and now what we'll do we're going to plot the results with box plot so we can see exactly how the number of trees affects the results let's go ahead and run this and now we can see that for 10 trees for 10 trees we get the worst results and we have quite a big uh, spread we have a couple of outliers and the same with 25 trees but you see like with 25 trees uh, our accuracy improves quite a bit and then it improves slowly the more trees we add and then it kind of starts to stabilize after let's say a hundred trees it still is a little bit better because this is the mean so the green line is the mean so we can see that our accuracy is still improving but marginally better with each number of decision trees that we add with the higher number of decision trees that we add so eventually you achieve the optimal number of decision trees which is around let's say 800 a thousand decision trees after a thousand decision trees the runtime is way too long and you don't get better model performance from it so i think the optimal number of trees is definitely above 100 but i think less or equal to uh, 1000 this is quite a very important takeaway because sometimes you would just think that oh if i just put a hundred thousand decision trees the model will just keep on improving but just the runtime is going to be crazy long and the the performance wouldn't improve with that specific change in the hyperparameter now another hyperparameter that we can look at is the size of the bootstrap sample and this is specified with the max samples now the default is to create a bootstrap sample that has the same number of examples as the original data set all right so the parameter that we can modify here is the max samples and what we can pass in here we can pass it as a ratio of the original data so we can pass it from zero to one meaning the percentage of samples that we want to use in that bootstrap sample and the default is 100 percent which is one because we want to create a bootstrap sample that has the same number of examples as the original data set but if we reduce that if we reduce the max samples that means we will increase the variance of the resulting decision trees and many times that can actually uh, result in a better performance but this is the trick here right with bagging 
we try to optimize for bias. So that's why the default is one because we want to reduce that variance as much as we can. But again, this is a hyperparameter that is very important for you to try to tune to see exactly how it performs on your specific problem. If you want to achieve better generalization results, then clearly you're going to go with a higher uh, number. Okay, You will go probably with the default of one. But if you want to optimize for variance for some reason, then you would make this parameter a little bit lower. You can try with 10, 20, 30, 50%, okay? To see exactly if that increase in variance will actually achieve better model performance. Let's do this here as well. So we're going to try with 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and the default one, which is 100%. So we're going to use a number of estimators of 100 here because of course we saw that from 100 estimators, it, it kind of stabilizes. And I also didn't want to have a crazy runtime for this uh, research task. And of course, we're going to use our repeated stereotype K fold, and we're going to uh, save all of these scores to a dictionary. The runtime here was six minutes and 49 seconds. And of course, I'm not going to waste your time running this again. So I already saved the results that we got with running it on 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% of the data set, right? Let's run and get this dictionary. And now if we plot these values, we will see, let's go ahead now, we will see that for our specific problem, the best results that we got were when we had above 75%. So for our specific problem, we can see that if we have less samples, the model performs worse. I think it's very, very important to understand how the max samples parameter actually affects the results. If you want to achieve a better model performance when it comes to bias, definitely go for a higher number of samples. But if you want to optimize for variance, go for a lower number of samples. So again, this is a hyperparameter that you need to tune based on your specific problem and it will differ based on the on the data set now of course i'm just running it with a default make classification data set but your problem will be much more complex and therefore you will get different results now before i end i just want to thank you guys for subscribing to our channel and for liking this video and i really hope that this was helpful i'll see you in the next one